Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's uh, so nice to see so many of you here again to um, talk about interviews this week. Um, we're going to be focusing on STEM subjects, that's science, technology, engineering and maths today. Um, I think it's going to be a relatively short one because I want to make sure that we have enough time for the Q&A. I'm at the end, which is where I think all the value is going to be. Um, I'm joined this week by my colleague, Ellie. Ellie, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Ellie. I'm an admissions consultant with Uni Admissions here. I've um, been speaking to lots of students about their upcoming interviews, um, whether or not they have that invitation yet. It's certainly something they are starting to prepare for, and um, we've been assisting assisting where we can. Fab. Thanks, Ellie. Um, so as I said, today we're going to be talking about interviews in the STEM subjects. Um, this is primarily going to apply to um, Oxbridge, but we're going to be talking about um, Oxbridge in a little bit greater detail next week um, as well. And then I think we'll be switching over to MMIs, and then it'll be Christmas, and we won't be talking about anything. Um, mm. 35 days to go. Oh, gosh. I Yes, I suppose so. <laughs> 35? Yes, right. Yes. <laughs> a, a bad start for my contributions on the maths side there. Um, so as I said, we'll be talking about interviews. Um, we'll be talking about how you get an interview. Hopefully, uh, many of you will already have heard. Um, if you have had news, please do let us know through the, um, the chat or the Q&A because it's one of those things that's really valuable for us to know because it helps us um, you know, really support the stu our students based on what, uh, what information there is. Um, we'll also be talking about what the interview itself is like. Um, I'll be talking um, a little bit from my own personal experience, uh, which wasn't in STEM, but I think is still hopefully a little bit useful. Um, and then we'll finally be uh, talking about how the interviews are assessed, what the, the relevant criteria are, um, and what things you should perhaps be, if not necessarily focusing on, certainly sort of bearing in mind if you're sort of tweaking your approach as, you, as the, the date closes in. Um, so yeah, um, so first we want to talk a little bit about how the, the interview sort of decision is reached. Ellie, if you can uh, pick up on the pie chart for a moment. Right. So as far as uh, the interview goes, it's, it's going to be weighted at about 30%. Now, this year's been a bit tricky because there, has, there were some issues with uh, the BMAT and, and other tests maybe not going as planned. Um, some of the admissions tests this year, it seemed that there were um, some technical difficulty. And that just means that the interview is going to be weighted uh, even uh, with more importance. So as you can see from our little pie chart there, the gray section, that is for the interview. So roughly 30% of the application is, is weighted there. And that means that um, it's certainly something students should be prepared for as it, it's counting for about a third of, of what will get that offer of admission or what won't. I've got the admissions test score there that's counting for roughly one third or 30% as well. And the exam grades or A, A level results or, or IB program or AP program, depending on, on what you're doing, that's counting for another about 30%. And that yellow section is just for everything else. So that's for your personal statement, your school recommendation, your um, extracurriculars or any work experience that you have. So, so many people don't realize how heavily the interview is weighted and, and the kind of questions or things that will be asked of students within those interviews. So it's certainly something that we recommend all students prepare for. Again, whether you know you have an interview or not, the universities will often give students as little as five to 10 days notice for their interview. So it's really something that should be prepared for in advance. If you have just found out though that you've got your interview, it's not too late and any preparation that you can do will benefit you. Um, 
whether it's, you know, practicing saying some of your answers aloud or um, going over some possible questions uh, with uh, a tutor um, and, and saying those questions aloud, practicing your answers, they're really going to want to see your thought process and how you can solve uh, tricky problems or problems where there's not necessarily a, a set answer for. They want to see your thought process there. So that's just a little bit about the pie chart and again, how important the interview is. Thanks, Ellie. The thing to remember, of course, as well, is that the interview is the last bit. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got that interview invitation, it's because you've ticked off all of those other, well, they're not boxes, aren't they? You've, you've ticked off all of those other wedges of cheese. Mm -hmm. um, and you're down into that last wedge where the decision is being made. Mm -hmm. um, and while all of those uh, previous factors are going to have uh, an impact at the margin, you know, if you're, um, if you're very close with a couple of other applicants as to whether you can get that place or not, and your interview scores are very similar, then there's other areas of the process are going to come more into play. Mm -hmm. But the interview really is the the key thing. Um, so as we said, um, uh, we want to, to clarify a little bit sort of the pie chart. Um, we should remember that the GCSEs are not as important as they used to be. Um, this is particularly because going forward, we're going to have a lot of students who haven't done formal GCSEs, but have done teacher assessed. Um, and so the um, universities are, are adapting in this uh, in this context. Oxford um, puts a little bit more emphasis on them than Cambridge. Um, but the context of your school is also very important. If you are the, the best person out of your school in a decade, that's going to count a lot more than you being uh, one of a number of people who's got nothing but nines from a, a high performing school. Um, the other thing to think about is that the number of people interviewed for each subject does vary. Um, Oxford interview very close to everyone who applies for chemistry, um, but they only uh, interview around 10% of people who apply for computer science. Now, in part, this is because computer science is unbelievably popular um, at Oxford. Um, there are, I believe, something of the order of 25 to 30 applications per place, um, which means that you have to do a lot of winnowing down before you, you uh, start inviting people to interview, because otherwise you would you'll be there for weeks. You, you know, you can't interview a thousand people. That would be silly. Um, and so if you are, you know, if you've applied to computer science and you've got that interview, um, you can be proud of that as an achievement on its own. That's already put you in the top 10% of applicants, even if you don't make it into the top three or four. That's still, still very impressive. Um, Cambridge uh, will interview pretty much everyone who applies for medicine, unless you've put something really rude in your personal statement. Um, and as a rule, at Cambridge interview more than Oxford anyway. So if you've, been apply if you've applied to Cambridge and you've got that, um, that interview, um, that does mean you're going to be competing with a slightly larger number of people at the interview stage mm -hmm. um, compared with Oxford, where they'll invite fewer people for, um, for interview. But again, you know, you're not going to get in without an interview. Um, there were a tiny number of anecdotes last year about students who you know, were the top perform the number one performer in the admissions test who were offered without interview because of the, the messiness of the virus. Um, we may see that again this year, maybe half a dozen people uh, getting through that way. But in practice, if you want to get in, you've got to get that interview. So having the interview is um, already a huge achievement. It's something that you can uh, be proud of on its own. Um, now, we talked a little bit about the admissions tests. I know there's been an enormous amount of disruption to those um, this year. So the graph I'm going to show next needs to be taken in the context of um, probably performance being much less, much less predictive. Um, but if we look at this uh, graph of the, of the performance in um, uh, the Oxford maths test, uh, what we see here is down below the, um, oh, I can, I can draw on it today, um, <laughs> down in the bottom third to a quarter of, um, of applicants, um, to a first approximation, no one is getting an interview and they no one is getting an offer and a tiny number of people are getting um, an interview. Now, those will probably be people who had um, very, uh, very impressive extenuating circumstances, um, people who were from particular backgrounds, people who there is a, a really good reason not to judge them on the uh, test alone. But if you look at those numbers, that uh, 
the uh, the y axis here is a uh, is raw numbers of students so we really are talking about i would imagine 15 in total um as we then get into kind of the middle part of the distribution you can see that um the uh, share of uh, people being interviewed is ticking up very, uh, really very smoothly as the share of people not interviewed uh, ticks down and the level of offers is going up with that as well. And then finally down here in sort of the top, um, the top 10% or so of the distribution, um, you can see that beyond this point, beyond 75 on the MAT, everyone's getting an interview. Um, and the and your odds of getting a place there go to be something of the order of 50 50 and if you're the person who did the very best on the test uh, down here at the end um unless you really screw up the interview then uh, you should get in um so that sort of gives you a sense of the uh, relationship between the um the admissions test scores and your chance of getting that interview now mm -hmm. probably you're going to find out in the next few weeks about the interview um, if you haven't heard already, I know a few people have. <coughs> um, but I'm really looking forward to getting hold of this data in the spring um, to see how much of a difference the sort of mess of the admissions test has made to the, uh, the smoothness of these graphs. Because if the admissions test haven't worked well, which is what we've heard particularly about the BMAT, but also about others, um, it's going to be really interesting to see to what extent this relationship holds up. Um, there's one argument, of course, that if everyone has a bad time with the test, uh, then that sort of levels things out. Um, but on the other hand, you could say that um, if everyone's had a bad time with the test, then it the sort of the testing function of it breaks down. So we will we will see what happens, basically. Um, so moving on, um, I want to talk a little bit about what the interview itself is like. Um, there are a lot of misconceptions around um, the Oxbridge interview process that you'll be asked crazy questions, um, lots of wacky stuff happening. Um, the good news is that really isn't um, commonplace. It may be that in the, you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s, um, things were a little bit weirder, um, but things have really formalized in a, a fairly serious direction. Um, do you mind if you took, uh, so, Ellie, would you mind taking this next slide while I get another cough suite? Sure. Yes. <laughs> no problem. No problem. So, uh, yeah, as Matt was saying, the the interviews are far more structured and, and strict than than you might think. They can be quite technical. So, one of the students um, that we are working with, she's been meeting with her tutor. Um, she's going to be applying to, or she is, she has applied to. Cambridge and um, natural science and one of the the questions that they were working on uh, was um, how many lights are there on a motorway so there's a few different ways you can break down that question there's no necessarily there's not necessarily a right or right answer but it you definitely would need to look at you know the meaning of the language there so they were looking at you know what defining lights and and what the lights would be recounting as um you know the length of the motorway how in some countries it's not called a motorway it's called a highway so really defining you know what it would be and they want to see or what she was practicing with her tutor was how to break that question down and make her answer a clear and concise and logical and really express her her way of thinking best um so our next point, every interview gr is graded this, uh, the same day and the grades continuously are audited internally. So that's that's just a, a fact of, of how the interviews will go. So, um, you know, there's been really uh, less uh, obscure questions. So for something they might used to say is tell me about a banana. So those they're sort of moving away from those questions and, and getting quite technical. I believe, Matt, students, you know, for STEM interviews, they are not allowed to bring a calculator into the interview. Is that correct? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. This is a good chance to pick up on something you mentioned earlier about the, the motorway question. Mm -hmm. um, this is an example of what we would call a Fermi problem, mm -hmm. uh, named after the physicist Enrico Fermi. Mm -hmm. And the idea here isn't to get the right answer, 
mm-hmm. um, because there probably isn't a right answer. Mm. Um, but it's to figure out a way of coming up with an answer that is broadly in the right ballpark. You know, if it's off by a factor of two or three, that's fine. If it's off by a factor of three or four thousand, that's a big problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but to come up with an answer that um, is broad, broadly plausible based on poor quality data. Um, and that's a really important skill in lots of areas of life, um, particularly in science and engineering, where you won't always have all the information you would like to make a precise answer. Mm-hmm. But if you can get something that is pretty close, um, you'll be able to sort of move on to the, the next problem from there. Um, and the calculator point is really, really useful. This is a good chance to um, sort of think about how the interview is built from the uh, interviewer's side. Um, it's very unlikely you'll be given a problem that you would need a calculator for. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you find yourself coming across the kinds of numbers that need a calculator, um, probably something has gone wrong, um, is what I would suggest. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a problem with fairly normal numbers, um, but that you have to manipulate in an interesting way. It's unlikely to be a problem where you are having to go down to five or six significant figures or whether you're dealing with some, some really unpleasant fractions. So, uh, to talk a little bit more about the the logistics of the interview, um, you'll have at least two interviews at the college uh, you applied for, um, and possibly a third at another college if the college you applied for is oversubscribed. Um, this is much more the case at Oxford um, than Cambridge, because Oxford are interviewing fewer people, they tend to shuffle them around a little bit more, um, and you'll be interviewed by at least two people each time. <coughs> Um, one of, if there are three people, there's a good chance one of them will be a PhD student who's learning how these things are done. But this is also to make sure that um, the interviews are done fairly. If the interviewers disagree about your performance, then having that third person there can be helpful. And it does mean that if um, if you have a, if you don't get on with the uh, the interviewer, or you know, conversely, if it turns out the interviewer is a, a friend of your dad's, um, you've got a You've got another person there to make sure that it doesn't become too uh, too cosy. Um, a lot of people will come out of the interview um, feeling as though it went very badly, uh, that they felt very stupid. Um, mm-hmm. That's normally a good sign. It is supposed to be difficult. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason you want to go to a you know a prestigious university is because you think that um, the people who work there are smarter than you. So. <coughs> If uh, speaking to them makes you feel stupid, that is, um, you know, that's how it's supposed to work, right? Um, this is a point I'm going to come to a little bit on the next slide, but Ellie, do you have any sort of student experiences you can you can draw from here while I do some more coughing? Um, you know, some some of the students we've we've started working with uh, this year are are gap year students, and the the hurdle, unfortunately, that that got them that didn't get them that offer of admission was the interview. So some of the students um, were accepted uh, to, or were offered an interview last year. And that's unfortunately the hurdle that they they fell at. Um, so being as prepared for that as possible will will really help you. Um, not a STEM, not a STEM interview, but I know for one student I was speaking to, um, she had practiced uh, with teachers at her school for a law interview. Um, unfortunately, the school didn't uh, go over any of the passages that that would have needed to be read, and in her. Oxford law interview they had different passages and they wanted to know her interpretation of the law and unfortunately she had no practice with that so that's something she's been practicing um, this year with her tutors and getting ready for that final leg hopefully she will get that offer of admission but um, certainly being prepared for the structure of your interview would be so helpful Um, you know from from our experience it seems that those schools may have many good intentions to help students prepare for interviews if they themselves have not been through that uh, Oxford or Cambridge or medicine interview themselves it's really difficult for them to know what to do so although we can appreciate that um, schools are trying to help it's uh, it certainly will help give the, the best amount of help to to be with someone or to to 
work on it with someone that has been through that them, themselves. Um, and uh, that's that's really where where uni admissions is, you know, helping helping many students because they're getting that as close to first hand experience as possible. Brief pause there while I find the right button. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ellie's, Ellie's absolutely right. Um, often the, the way this is done in schools is they will have a, um, a teacher who went to Oxford or Cambridge maybe uh, 10 or 12 years ago, mm -hmm. um, maybe even longer depending on sort of the vintage of the, um, of the teacher. And while that can be really valuable speaking to someone who was there, you know, three, four, five years, maybe even only one or two, mm -hmm. it's going to mm -hmm. be so much more uh, so much more relevant you know so much more up to date mm -hmm. yeah sorry about this everyone hopefully it'll wear off um before next week um so i want to talk a little bit about um uh, some uh, tips i've taken away from my personal experience okay do you want um, me to go on there matt no no I'll, this is this <laughs> is me um so i was interviewed uh, unsuccessfully at oxford in 2008 uh, a very long time ago, uh, George Bush was president. Um, <laughs> as long ago as that. Um, and these are sort of the things I, I picked up from not only my own experience, but also people who I spoke to at the time and what seemed to be the sort of th mistakes people were making, what could be, be really valuable to build on. Um, so the first thing is to make sure that everything you have said you have read on your personal statement you have actually read um if you've said that you've read the whole of the of one of the richard Feynman books if you said that you've read you've read the whole of a brief history of time um make sure you have actually done it um there is a chance that they will ask you about it and if you've said i loved reading a brief history of time it inspired me to become a physicist and they say you know, what happens at the end of Brief History of Time, you know, who, whose fault is it? Um, and you don't know, you're going to look very silly. Um, what you want to be doing is showing off the depth of your knowledge in areas that you are actually comfortable with. And so making sure you've actually read the book mm -hmm. is a huge start there. Yeah, I think um, Ro Rohan, Dr. Rohan Argawal said uh, one of his colleagues had mentioned he read The God Delusion by Richard mm. Dawkins. Yes. And, and Richard Dawkins was actually in the interview. Uh, so he was one of the people asking questions to, to the student. So it was quite you know, a phenomenal experience for that student. Uh, I'd love to meet Richard Dawkins. Um, so just be prepared for that. The actual author of the book that, uh, that you have mentioned may be there. There you go. Um, probably, probably that doesn't happen every time, but it's the kind of thing you should definitely be, um, be prepared for it. Absolutely. Um, uh, carrying on from that, um, I'm setting a very bad example today because I've got this horrible cough. Um, <coughs> um, in the interview, don't rush yourself. Um, take your time. Stay calm. If you don't understand the question, ask them to repeat it. If you need to stop and have a think, you know, make sure you've got a glass of water with you and, you know, oh, that's really interesting. Long pause to think. Mm. And in those few seconds, I've actually been able to think about what I'm going to do. Um, this leads on to the next and I think most important point. Don't, don't make stuff up. Um, if you're not sure, try not to panic and say something silly. They are experts. They will know mm -hmm. if you um, suggest a kind of really interesting and novel theory because you've just made it up. They'll be really interested and they'll want to hear more. Um, but unfortunately, you won't know anymore because you've just made it up. <laughs> if you had to make up a fact, again, they're going to ask you and your fact is going to fall apart because not real. So you want to stay away from that. If you don't know, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and this leads on to the, the final point here, which is remember at a kind of 30,000 foot level why you're going. You want to go to university to learn stuff, not to teach. Um, you might want to teach eventually, but that's going to be 10, 15 years down the line. 
but you're there to learn. So the reason you're going is because you don't know stuff. Yeah. You want to ask questions, be curious, find new things out. You're not there to show off that you already know everything. Mm-hmm. Another I've worked with students, yeah. So I've worked with students before who come into the interview with the attitude of, you know, oh, well, I'm, I'm incredibly smart. I already know everything. And the problem then becomes, well, why do you want to go to Oxford? You know, you're already smarter than us. Why, why bother? It would be a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, that's not going to get you through. If they think that you are, you know, too arrogant, then they're not going to be interested. Uh, Ali, you wanted to come in? Oh, yeah. Just I was attending the interview, one of the interview intensive courses uh, we run. Um, that one that's happening this weekend we do have um, another one coming up uh, the following weekend and I believe one early December as well and uh, one of the um, lecturers for this interview intensive course was was saying yeah exactly that they they want to see how you think they want to see how you can work out unknown problems yeah the questions aren't designed to be easy they're designed to to push the students uh, to really make them think and they love to see unique and, and different different thought processes, um, you know, based on the knowledge that that you've already acquired in school from your further reading. Um, and that's that's showing that's really going to going to help. Uh, if you go in on an answer that you're not sure about, you can change your answer. That's OK. Or say if the interviewer is uh, challenging your answer, trying to refute it. If you can continue on to to prove that your answer is 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 valid they're they're going to you know appreciate that but at the same time if you've been if you've been beaten try and see it from their their point of view as well they're going to you know appreciate that you've you can learn and you're willing to learn um that's the the sort of student that they are looking for oh, um, you're on. sorry about that um so i just wanted to finally throw up a couple of um example interview questions um that we have um we've we've seen in the last couple of years just to give you a a sense of what sort of thing you might uh, you might hear and then we'll move on to um talking a little bit more about the the support uni admissions are are able to offer so sorry my my voice is not up to this today it turns out okay um, <laughs> Do you want me to say it? So some of the interview questions, you might be looking at graphs and in, uh, data interpretation questions. So they'll show you something and they'll want to see how, how you would interpret that data. What is your perception of it? What's your knowledge of it? How can you explain it to the best of your ability? Um, you know, they could be similar problems that you would have seen in your admissions test, but obviously it's not on paper or a computer anymore. It's, it's how you're explaining it to the best of your bit ability um, within your interview. So again, all of the interviews are going to be conducted um, online uh, this year as, as, as they were in pre- uh, last year due to COVID. So, you know, when you're going into that, that Zoom interview, yeah, you are going to be wanting to make your answers as, as clear and concise as you would for, for any interview. Yeah. Thanks, Ellie. Um, mm-hmm. And I just wanted to add a, offer a couple of example questions. Um, I don't know the answers to these, but these are the kinds of things you might uh, find yourself being asked. Um, one of our Natsuki applicants was asked, um, I believe last year, why it is that cats live longer than dogs on the whole. Um, one of our chemistry students would ask what they would change about um, the periodic table. Um, a physics student about how aeroplanes work. And um, students were also asked what their favorite number was uh, for maths and engineering. So I don't know, do you, do you have any favorites there, Ellie? I don't know, but I was just thinking if I was, say, a computer science student, perhaps I would choose something like zeros and ones for binary code. Um, but then maybe I'm sort of biased because my birthday is the 1st of October. So maybe I already like zeros and ones. Uh, but uh, no, that's that's a really interesting question. I think they just want to see, again, how you would explain and, and why why you like those numbers. Um, they're really wanting to see your, your thought process and your reasoning behind it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I suppose the real trick with them um, one's favorite number you know the smart answer is oh my favorite number is e mm. uh, which is barely a number at all mm. um uh now so ellie um 
Of course, we have um, uh, a vast range of support we offer here at Union Admissions for students. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to skip through very briefly a couple of these because um, it being a little bit late in the day, um, with interviews coming up in the next few weeks, um, some of these things are going to be less relevant than others. Mm -hmm. um, so while we have a, a vast range of resources, uh, our enrichment seminars, the, the, gr the, um, the group sessions of teaching we also provide, um, we um, will be focusing for anyone who is, is joining us now uh, very much on the one-to-one -one tuition. So if you're able to talk about that a little bit, Ellie. Right. So anyone that we would be able to, to work with, um, we would be focusing on getting them prepared for, for that interview. Um, so all of the, the tutors that we work with are Oxbridge students or recent graduates. Um, they've been through the whole admissions test before and they've been through that interview process before too. Um, they've succeeded and crucially they have helped other students through it too. So getting prepared for that interview, again, breaking down the interview process is really going to help you. And our, our tutors are, are so phenomenal at that. Um, you know, they would go through everything that you would need to know. Uh, they would be reviewing your personal statement with you, reviewing, again, as Matt said, any books that you've written about within your personal statement um, with you to get you prepared for that. And of course, many, many, many example questions that you could be asked, breaking down that question um, and, and helping you form the best possible possible answer for it. I think some people can worry with interview preparation if they'll be taking themselves out of the equation. And that's certainly not the case. It's really going to just be showcasing your best self to make sure your answers um, reflect your knowledge to the best of to the best of your ability. And sometimes, you know, just having some tweaking there, some preparation, a few hours of of interview preparation will really be will really be useful, um, and also that comes with uh, mock interview practice. So many students they will be working with a main tutor for several sessions, and then they would have uh, further mock interviews with different tutors. And what that helps you do is is get used to speaking with different people so you can get quite comfortable with your main tutor and then when you're having those mock interviews it's a whole new tutor a whole new um, set of questions again they'll all be related but it just means that by the time you get to your interview um, you've spoken with with many different experts uh, within this field that have been trained by uni admissions in-house to to give you the best possible interview experience and just hopefully meaning that by the time you do have your interview that nothing's coming completely out of left field you will have prepared for it you're feeling confident and, and just showcasing all of your knowledge to the best of your ability thanks ali um we also work hard to provide um really detailed feedback for both parent and student after the interviews mm -hmm. um this is the kind of length of uh, report that comes through um, through afterwards, uh, and that gets sent to both parent and student, so they can um, really focus on what what areas that they're they're trying to improve in the, in the limited time available. Um, and with that feedback too, you can you can build on that. So with your first mock interview, you'll get lots of feedback. You can reflect on that, and by the time you have your next mock interview, you you've built on that. So each, each mock interview, you're going to be building on the feedback that you've received. Um, so by the time you're, again, getting to your real interview, you've had so many different experiences, uh, reframing your answers, trying new questions, it just will mean that you're, you're very well prepared for it. Yeah. Um, the good news is that our approach seems to work. Um, last year, we were really delighted with our success for Andrew Oxbridge running it just over a third of the of the national average which is something that we're we're really proud of and it compares um i've pulled up the data from oxford here but really flatteringly with some of the, uh, the most prestigious schools in the country mm -hmm. um, i like to joke that um although our um facilities aren't quite as uh, as impressive as those at eton or at westminster mm -hmm. um we do achieve at a at a broadly similar level when it comes to uh, getting students into Oxford, and that's something we're, we're really proud of. Um, 
Uh, people have a, a range of nice things to say about us on Trustpilot. Um, I recommend going to have a look at those, um, not just for the experiences of parents and students, but also of tutors and, and of those people who um, perhaps haven't been a good match for our services. You know, we don't um, try and hide away the negative feedback. It's all about making sure that we're a company that's continually improving what we're offering. Um, so I, I really recommend having a look at those. And if you've um, enjoyed this webinar particularly, please do pop on there and say something nice about Ellie and I. Um, that counts towards our uh, our sense of self-worth in a, in a way that we would really, really appreciate. <laughs> um, so um, I think that brings us on to the Q&A now. Um, I'm going to take questions for a few minutes, probably until about 10 to 3, um, as my voice isn't going to stand up to this for much longer. Yeah, I can um, read those, Matt, if you want. Fab. So please do drop things into the Q and A section of the of the webinar, um, okay. and we'll we'll work through a few of those. Um, if you're looking for um, really specific advice about particular subjects, about your uh, your son or daughter's particular approach, um, particular areas of, of um, particular areas of difficulty, or if you are um, already keen to get in touch and start working with us, you know, without delay, please do um, follow the sort of the instructions uh, in the animation that should be playing um, to book a consultation with us, which will give us the chance to speak to you directly. And that's a chance to speak to Ellie or one of her colleagues, and they'll be able to um, really have a discussion about you so that we can put together the best program of support possible. Mm -hmm. Um, Malik uh, Khalil has just asked in the chat there roughly how long are you supposed to talk for for each question that you're asked and um, I believe that the interviews for Oxbridge are about half an hour so you're going to be asked a variety of different questions that it really will depend on the question of, of how long you're supposed to, to talk for well I wouldn't say you're supposed to talk for any set amount of time. Um, it just depends on, on how you're able to frame your answer. Again, you're going to want to be as concise as possible, but show all the knowledge that you do have. Um, you might not you might not know the answer, but they're going to want to see, you know, your thought process, how you break it down. Thanks, Ellie. Um, okay. Looking go on uh, to the question uh, the other question and answers there yeah uh, so Jonathan George asks about the um, uh, about our, about whether it's worth sort of coming to work with us for students who are applying this year so um, of course we would um, approach things differently if you were applying next year um, we do work with students for a year for two years sometimes even three years prior to their application um, and that kind of program of support is very different from what we would do if you were um, looking at an interview date on, you know, in the next two or three weeks. Um, but we're still very keen to provide support there, um, principally through mock interviews, but also through um, being able to uh, give you sort of a little bit of, you know, what, what inside knowledge we have of the process and to you know, really support you with that interview. Um, the approach we take in, you know, for, in the short term is very different from what we would do if we were planning, you know, a year out. But um, if you've got that interview invitation, you know, it is down to you and maybe one or two other people for that place. And so any little bit of edge you can get is gonna hopefully pay off. Um, someone also asked if I tested positive for COVID-19 prior to an admissions test and, there, and therefore was unable to sit it, does that mean I will be shortlisted for an interview. Certainly, if you have extenuating circumstances, uh, you can you can contact the university. I know many students that had problems uh, sitting their BMAT or other admissions test. Uh, there was also some technical difficulties with the UCAT. You can um, apply, uh, send in a form for extenuating circumstances. Just explain what's happened, um, and they will you know, take that into consideration when they're, they're offering an interview. Um, yeah, of course, the, you know, the virus is not your fault. Um, and so um, I'm sure that won't be taken as a negative on your application. It just means there's one fewer, fewer data points to, mm -hmm. to include there. So hopefully um, things will still go to, go to plan, but there's, um, 
uh, you know, there's nothing that can be done about the virus, unfortunately. So, you know, we have a lot of sympathy with your your situation. Mm -hmm. And another student or another person here has asked, how do you help with the computer science interviews um, at Cambridge? Can you tell in detail what the interview will involve and how you will prepare my son for that? So again, if someone is coming to us who is, is a student that we could work with, we can't work with every student, but they're certainly you know, meeting the minimum requirements there for um, their predicted grades. Um, you know, they've had that uh, admissions consultant speak speak with your son and um, they may be able to to recommend some support there the best way to really prepare for for a computer science interviews is looking at the types of questions that you will be asked and, and breaking them down and practicing them practicing them practicing them orally uh, many students have said uh, when they're preparing for interviews they've you know read interview books or watched some youtube videos and while that's helpful it's not actually getting any first-hand experience doing it yourself um, you know, you can read a lot of books about it. You can uh, watch watch different videos about it. But the best experience, the most helpful experience that you're going to get for it for any um, Oxbridge interview, is by practicing uh, speaking your answers uh, orally with with someone that's going to give you detailed feedback. Um, that's really how you're going to learn. Absolutely, thanks, Ali. Um, and I think this is particularly important for STEM subjects. Um, there are um, you know, it might be a little bit of a stereotype, but certainly some of our um, the STEM students we work with are not always the uh, the most confident in that kind of public speaking setting, mm -hmm. and so being well prepared for that makes a makes a really big, really positive difference. Um, as far as knowing the the specifics of the interview, um, you know, we don't know in detail what the interviews will involve. We don't get to decide what's going to what questions there will be, um, but. Preparing in too much detail isn't necessarily a good thing either. You want to be ready to adapt. Um, you want to be able to adapt to, you know, on the fly as things change. So, <coughs> mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. Okay. Um, Another question so. there is, is it all right to reference things from your personal statement when answering questions during the interview, especially uh, personal questions. Yes, certainly. They, they want to know about you. This is your personal interview. They, they will want to know about, you know, what, what interests you, what makes you think, um, you know, this is really your chance to stand out as a candidate. So make it as memorable as possible for them in a, in a good way um, by really making, making your answers unique to you. Thanks, Ali. Um, uh, 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 MK says that he's got an interview scheduled with Cambridge. Congratulations. Um, as, as we mentioned, we can provide a lot of support uh, with mock interviews. Um, we have um, access to all of the um, all of the admissions, uh, the admissions test questions that we, we help our students revise with if you want to go back over that kind of material. Um, but it really is the mock interview support that's the the real selling point at this time of year you know if you haven't done one of these before if you've done two or three the improvement you can get from doing you know six or seven is going to be mm. going to be really meaningful and really enhance your chances yeah um yeah. i will just say as well that the the quality of the mock interviews as well as they will be subject area related um you know from from oxbridge um, all of our tutors, our students are recent graduates, so in your subject field, in your subject area. So, you know, them being through that process themselves is very helpful, but they have had further training from, from uni admissions in-house. In so that, that sort of feedback will be really specific um, to you and really helpful. Um, again, you know, many schools will, will try and help some students um, succeed in their interviews, but um, they're not necessarily trained in, in how to do that. Um, I think that brings us to the end for today. Uh, I've seen a question from Talal about personal statements. Um, mm -hmm. We will uh, be revisiting all of that stuff in the new year for new applicants. So I think if you want to join us then, that would be the best bet. Um, mm -hmm. As if you're planning as the the personal statements are now quite, you know, very much in the in the future for next year. So I think we'll we'll revisit that. Um, and please, as uh, as we mentioned, do um, 
uh, book a consultation with us to see what we can do to help you. Um, we're keen to help as many students as we possibly can. Um, and we're, um, yeah, really excited to, um, to work with you if that's what suits. Oh, and um, Pavan asks whether the tutors for computer science will be uh, computer science grads themselves. Uh, yes, they will be. Um, and if not, they will be, you know, uh, they'll be math, they'll be mathematics gr uh, grads who have um, specialised in the sort of computer adjacent areas. You know, we make sure that all of the the tutors we work with are are sufficiently specialised to to know their stuff. Um, thanks so much for joining me again this week, Ali. Um, no we will see. Yeah, we'll see you all again to talk a little bit about Oxbridge um, next week. Um, have a have a lovely weekend everyone and um and goodbye uh, bye bye